and welcome again to another episode of The Paradigm Shift. My name is Nick Zigich, and we're going to be talking about different things that shift, especially paradigms. So today we're going to talk about something I'm very passionate about, and that's movies. You don't even want to know how many movies I watch because it wouldn't be funny. <laughs> but I love them. Uh, I love all kinds of movies. And today in the studio, I have two guests that, know, that have viewed more movies than you can see in your lifetime. And today with me in the studio is Vera Miolcic, uh, director and founder of the Southeast European Film Festival, and Del Weston, a founder and president of the Action on Film Festival, which is hosted right here in the city of Monrovia. Beautiful Monrovia. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. I'm doing great. Nice to be here. Thank you for All having right. us. All right. So what we're going to be talking about, or breaking down to bits and pieces, is the culture of film. It is... It is so amazing to actually talk about the influence of film on culture, on people, and mm -hmm. so on. And since there's all types of films out there, I wanted to actually break down these two, three different categories. Like Vera, you were working with South e East Southeast European, European film, Correct. which has its own values and stuff like that. Correct. Del, you're working with action on film doesn't mean only action, but all the movies that you see in your festival. And then there is, we just watched the other day, the Oscars, and there is the Hollywood movies and so on. And how every one of these categories influences the public, the mm -hmm. people watching them. So, Vera, tell us a little bit about your festival. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much uh, uh, for inviting me to the show. And I'm very pleased to be with a colleague because we started a very interesting conversation, which we will continue, yeah. I absolutely. hope. But you got uh, to you know, put something on the table here, too. You know? Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Well, we were talking about what we both, you know, see out there and, uh, um, and concerns that we all have about, you know, the movie theaters closing down, the, you know, fewer number of movies per year. Because we uh, are a California-based nonprofit organization, so uh, we work in this community, we work in this state, and uh, um, I don't know about Monrovia, but I would, you know, take a guess that you know, like in LA, theaters are closing down. It's getting harder to show films, and festivals are actually now really shouldering the effort. Don't you mm -hmm. agree? To show the films, to give an opportunity to filmmakers and authors to present their work to the audience, because films are made for the audience. And it's getting very, very hard on us. Uh, we are a small specialty festival. We have our niche, and we know we're, we, we stick to that. Yeah. But we are overwhelmed with number of submissions. There's no way we can show all of that. And if we try to do, you know, we're looking for more venues, and we are now doing programming throughout the year to show more films. But, you know, it's like be, uh, being between um, a rock and a hard place. What do you do? You have a lot of films. You have a lot of great films. Mm -hmm. You would love to show them. But, you know, y it's up to us. You know, we have, you know, a few people between a great number of movies, some of them very good, and outlets to show them. So that's really a, a big issue. Good. Well, we'll get back to the challenges of the festival mm -hmm. themselves. Let's see what uh, AOF Action, Action on, on Film. Action on Film is in its ninth year. We show an average of 400 to 450 films and projects each season. We show documentary, uh, drama, comedy, action, romantic comedy, experimental music videos, and uh, work from a lot of the writers that submit to us because we actually shoot scenes from their films and show them on the screen. Um, we've had a lot of difficulty um, um, giving everyone a shot. Okay. And the big thing for filmmakers now is that you can show your movie on the internet, but films were not meant to be watched on a, on a, on a 16 inch screen. Films were meant to be watched on a 40 foot screen. And the, the, the beauty of filmmaking is that you can create something incredible yeah. and have an audience awed by it just by the sheer size of the screen, the That's size of the actors, mm -hmm. the, 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 the broadness of the sound. You know, and then also the shared experience of watching it with an audience. You don't get that, that on the internet. Valuable. You don't get mm -hmm. that. So I think that's the value of, of what we do. I've experienced both. So, you know, I have the different, uh, I value both in a different way. Uh, in your case for the AOF last year, I was in those rooms with those producers and actors showing those movies that might have never had a chance to be on the big mm -hmm. screen. Um, I've watched... Uh, Six uh, String Samurai, which I've watched a couple of years before on a TV mm -hmm. or on a computer, actually, 
and then seeing it in the theater, it was like, wow, it's a no totally different thing. No so a beautiful opportunity for those people and a great thing to sit in. I've sat in your pro uh, present Screening. projections, screenings, <laughs> yes, and saw movies that, I mean, how would you actually get exposed to a movie from Never. Romania or Never. wherever uh, if you don't attend one of those opportunities and what, right. that's why you brought them over? Yeah, it, it's maybe just, uh, um, let's say, a handful of films that have already won at major international festivals, Berlin or Cannes, um, Venice, and they would, you know, make it to the U.S. And they are picked up by big distributors um, like IFC Films in New York. But this is just a handful of films, and these are for a very, you know, sp specific audience. But we are talking here about opening these avenues for more people yeah. to come to see movies. We are both, in our different ways, trying to cultivate a taste for films, a taste for seeing films in a movie theater, a taste for, you know, hanging out after the movie, having a glass of wine, talking about films, talking about art. And, you know, things happen when you have that type of uh, uh, situation and that type of environment. And it's just the biggest challenge, I think, for everybody is, um, there are many challenges, but the biggest probably is the outlets, the theaters. Um, and for smaller theaters, for the single screen theaters, or maybe two or three, like the Lamley chain, it's hard because you have A, you have to, uh, uh, I mean, they have to upgrade to DCP, which costs a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and it's about the control by the studios. So with all due respect, I think that, you know, that control has gotten out of hand. And, uh, and that's a challenge. Although, you know, you would not think that we would be comp competing with studios, but you are pushed in the same marketplace, whether you like it or not. Yeah. So you are in competition with films that are $500 million budget with I don't know how big advertising budget. Uh, th that's exactly why I came out with this show, exposed to the two opportunities. I thought, wait, you know, there's a, there's a real paradigm shift here. And you might wonder, and the audience might wonder too, what is the paradigm here? And I see it as this. First of all, for the people to get exposed to your, the type of movies you're presenting, they need to come and see them. So versus the high budget advertising they get for mainstream or Hollywood, a lot of people don't know. Even in Monrovia, a lot of people didn't know there was a festival. I mean, it's a small city. So that is one thing, getting those people to take the culture out of this movie, you know, not just uh, action, 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 and CGI and whatnot, but some value out of an artistic point of the movie. And the other thing is, I think changing the shift of how the community or the local governments see the festivals. Because Chamber of Commerce, local governments, and so on, your, your sponsors are already involved. But if those people can see the value of actually bringing the information to their population of these events happening, I think that's a shift that needs to happen. I don't think it's happening right now. Well, it, it, it's happening and it's not happening. What, what people fail to understand about a film festival or a, an art opening or a photography exhibit is that it has to be uh, created as an event. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are living your life, you've got the internet, you've got video games, you've got TV, you've got cable, you've got uh, presidential elections, you've got everything taking your, you've got your job, your family, your mortgage, you've got all these things taking your attention. If you're going to look at film uh, the way you look at, at the written word or the way you look at plays or the way you look at galleries or art openings or whatever you want to look at culturally, you're going to have to have people who excite their base. And most filmmakers, while they're creative, don't understand how to excite their base. And so that's become the responsibility of the festival in a lot of ways. Yeah. But with regards to city governments, with regards to chambers of commerce, or regard, they don't really care. Unless it's bringing money to them directly or helping them mm -hmm. do their jobs, they don't really care. That's not their job. Um, it is, it's incumbent upon us to teach filmmakers how to create uh, excitement, buzz, and, 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 and the thrills for people to come into an audience, uh, to a theater. Sundance does a brilliant job of that. They do such a brilliant job that we know that out of 13,000 submissions, maybe 20 come from an American audience, right? And they still pack their theaters. Well, why is that? Right. Because they've created a, an event that people want to be a part of. And that's our job now, too. And I, and I have to say, I don't see help coming from anyone. But see how, what, why I'm mentioning that, maybe I can't communicate it clearly enough, is that 
I went to a school out in Europe. Uh -huh. And in, during the school hours, we would sit in class and be exposed to things that we would not want to do on our own. Uh -huh. Listen to Bach and Beethoven uh -huh. and so on and watch movies from independent producers or some types of movies where the main character dies at the end. Uh -huh. So we have learned to appreciate the art without being asked for it. But that's a different culture. So what culture. I'm thinking is if, 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 that, if there was a way of promoting it within the communities where the, the festivals are happening, maybe more people would come and try it. And those would, you know, regardless of you know what the producers are making for their particular audience. Yeah, but I think that you're, you're looking, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, go I, ahead. I, it's like part, I, I, I agree so far. Yeah. <laughs> part, part of the issue yeah, is throw that the yeah, in. Yeah. I think you're going to see a shift now because video games are so violent. So you've been seeing all these mass killings and all these horrible things. So kids are now taking their video games mm -hmm. and throwing them in the trash. Well, that leaves an opening for culture. That leaves an opening for music. That leaves an opening for art. That leaves an opening for film. The question is, can we fill that gap? And, yeah. do we, and once we filled the gap, have we filled it with something that's interesting, relevant, exciting? You know, or did we just say, well, here's a film from a guy in Cleveland, and maybe that guy shouldn't be making movies. You've ruined your opportunity to, to, to capture that mind right. you know, and capture that audience member. So you know, it, it, it's a dicey game. It's a very dicey you game. Now, when you mentioned that, and I'll just stick to, to that for a second, uh, the AOF is geared toward creating opportunity for filmmakers around the country and the world actually to show their pieces whether they are uh, accredited producers or not. Well, the, so the cleanup process or the filters are with the audience, right? The cleanup process is, you know, you know your mother loves you. <laughs> your mother usually loves you. Your uncle Sid loves you. He loves what you make. He'll give you five grand to help make your movie. The audience doesn't love you so much. And if you, you can't fully, the audience is a very intelligent group of people. People don't want to believe that, but if you take an audience and put them in a theater, nine times out of ten, they're going to tell you the truth about what they just saw, what mm. they thought of what just happened. I think, it's an, I think it's an invaluable <laughs> experience for a filmmaker to hear <laughs> the truth about their work. It's either going to make them better or it's going to make them quit. Yeah. I very rarely see filmmakers who get worse. I see filmmakers who either A, get better and do mm. better work and surround themselves with better collaborators and better producers, or they quit the process. Mm -hmm. And some people should quit the process. Some people are not cut out to be filmmakers. But easy access to equipment, easy access to editing equipment, easy access to subjects, the, the, the decline of art and the increased availability of reality-based programming makes people think that everyone's a filmmaker when in fact they aren't. They're just people with a soapbox. So an audience gives you a chance to say, hey, maybe you shouldn't be on that soapbox. Oh my God, you should be on a bigger soapbox. And we give them that opportunity. That, that's part of our process. Yeah. Um, I think that, um, just to add something that um, um, I believe that we fundamentally really agree because we love movies, mm -hmm. so we, we, you know, uh, we're on the same page. Um, every once in a while, um, a filmmaker comes along mm -hmm. out of the blue, mm -hmm. uh, didn't go to a film school, uh, we don't know why he chose to, you know, make a movie. And we've had that situation, which is why we keep our, our process still open. We are not, uh, um, you know, doing any submissions online to make it open to the guerrilla filmmakers mm -hmm. and those who are not too ma majority of them yes nine out of ten you really these are not movies for festival but then somebody comes along who makes a movie that really just shows you something that you've never seen before so i think it's valuable to keep the process open it's a burden is on us it's very hard for us to do Absolutely. i think you agree because it's very time consuming people don't realize how time consuming it is you work all year round you try to get the sponsors you try to find the theaters you try to make as good an experience for everybody as you possibly can um, and then you basically nurture a filmmaker who doesn't have the funds or he just sends you a file yeah. <laughs> or sends you a little DVD and then you try to you know nurture this little movie and eventually maybe you will help somebody like that so I think it's important to keep the door uh, of the festivals open because we are the only ones left really there's nothing you know distributors are not interested in, in any small movies right. you know where they're interested like they say art house European films these are the biggest European films Michael Haneke mm -hmm. is the biggest he is the Quentin Tarantino of Europe. I mean, I'm not comparing. It's a different, but you know, it's that status. He's like the god in Europe. It's not a small art house movie. It's a huge European film. So to have a really small film, American or any other film, it's festivals are the only outlet. 
And uh, w I believe that we try to do the best that we can. Um, but again, it's getting very, very hard for us. I, I don't think that I, we would quit the, uh, doing what we're doing. It's just that you pour a lot of love and a lot of effort. And in our case, we just have very modest support from uh, the funders in the state, the California Art Council, the Los Angeles County Arts Commission, the City of Los Angeles Arts Department, um, uh, Department, I'm sorry, Department of Cultural Affairs, and the Arts Commission of the City of West Hollywood, UCLA. But all of these um, entities are now also suffering budget cuts. Yeah. So uh, as far as the um, a small art house uh, film festival is concerned, we are looking for partnerships mm -hmm. in, you know, with, uh, um, you know, other companies, corporations, uh, communities, different cities, uh, and we're trying, hopefully, to revive maybe some of the theaters that are still <clears throat> left out there, so that we have a theatrical outlet to show films Absolutely. year round. Uh, but again, it's uh, you know, the it's very hard. It costs money. Yeah. Well, you you got to collect money. You got to put the efforts to create the, the event to happen, yeah, and it w it's just then a pity if the maximum amount of people don't actually take advantage of it to see it. Well, there's also been attrition on the part of a lot of film, film festivals that have failed over the last three to five years. Mm -hmm. They've just gone away. Mm -hmm. And in a way, that's good because it's let the festivals that were powerful and strong and to stand up, strong enough to stand up on their own two feet, they have more opportunity. Yeah. But some of the other festivals that were out there, and, and, and there's a number I, I believe don't belong, um, don't belong. They, they, they're not doing it for the right reason. I, I recently read a festival's uh, outline and it said, not only do we, do we not guarantee to watch your film, we guarantee we probably won't watch the first five minutes. And when I read that, I thought, who would submit to this festival? Right. And what came to mind was a, an artist named Stan Harrington. He, he came to us in 2000. And seven, every one of every festival he'd entered had been he'd rejected him. And I saw this film, and I said, "Well, it's challenging. It's very challenging." But I saw the art in it, and he won our best picture that year with a film that had been rejected by about thirty festivals before us. Uh, this year, he's coming out with a brand new film. It's called Lost Angels with a million dollar budget. And the difference between that young man continuing on and making great art, um, and and where he started was a festival. Opportunity to And the opportunity yeah. was, he, was there. And now he has funding for other films. He's also a speaker for Sony. <laughs> He's a, a speaker for the NAB. He's done all these great things. And that opportunity exists because a real festival, such as what you throw on, such as what I throw, gave them a shot to be seen mm -hmm. and gave them a shot also to continue their career. So some of these other festivals that don't give you that shot, maybe they shouldn't be around. Well, let's just... Uh, uh, address a little bit on the festival itself. So why don't you tell us about the festival, uh, the Southeast European Festival, and uh, what, when it is, and uh, how many entries you have this year, so that we can understand the opportunity as well. Um, well, the festival is now in its eighth year. Um, I'm, I'm the founder, so I started it 10 years ago. Uh, we had uh, three full programs before we uh, started under this name. And uh, so it's officially the eighth year, but otherwise 10th. Um, we have now more than 200 films that are submitted and then more films that have come from our colleagues who are programmers from some festivals in Europe that we work with. Mm -hmm. We cover a region of 15 countries from Austria in the northwest to Turkey in the southeast. It's a really interesting region. It's very small. It's 15 countries, right? 15, 15. yes. And it's a, uh, you know, a lot of different cultures that overlap, uh, that you know, influence each other. Uh, many, you know, it's, a, it's a conflict zone. It's a, it's a place where a lot of um, conflicts are happening, and some very recent. Um, it's a tough place to live in, but that also for art, it, yes, it just gives you incredible stories. And of course, it takes a real talented filmmaker who can capture that story and the emotion and the culture and transfer that to film. Yes. But, you know, we have some of the top filmmakers in the world working in this particular region. Um, just, uh, I guess, last week or 10 days ago, the Berlin Film Festival, uh, the, the two top awards, the Golden Bear and Silver Bear, went to um, a Romanian filmmaker, Kalin Peter Netzer, uh, who won our best film award uh, uh, two years ago for Medal of Honor. It's a child's pose, 
won uh, Berlin this year, and Dan Istanovic from Bosnia, who won uh, the you know the best foreign Oscar language film Oscar ten years ago in two thousand two. Uh, he won the Silver Bear for uh, a film, uh, and the actor from his movie won Best Actor. Um, Christian Munju from uh, Romania, um, of the you know four months, three weeks, and two days fame, that's his uh, masterpiece film. Uh, he continues to make uh, really terrific films, Beyond the Hills, has been picked up for U.S. distribution. Uh, Nuri Bilceylan from Turkey is uh, one of the foremost filmmakers in the world. So a tiny, a relatively tiny region makes for wonderful talent. Because you have the, this clash of different, different but very similar cultures, and again, it's tough to live there, but, um, and politically it is very volatile, but you have some wonderful films that come from the region, and that's what we do. We try to, uh, it's not just a particular individual films. Mm -hmm. We actually try to give a snapshot of the region Absolutely. to the audience. Yeah, it is. To it educate, is is. so that you, you, know, you see a little bit of features, you see some documentaries, but if you see more than two or three films, you kind of get a, 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 um, a photo uh, impression mm -hmm. and, and an emotional impression of what happens there, who are the people yeah. who live there. So that's what we try to do and of course nurture you know, whatever talent uh, we feel strongly about. Um, we have a great support from the industry. Um, American filmmakers, uh, some of them have recently joined the board um, because they were taught uh, in school about Eastern European cinema, European cinema mm -hmm. tradition, so they love the, the, the film. And they want to follow, they, they make different movies, but they like to be informed. And this is a great opportunity in a few days or in being involved with the festival. They see a lot of films. Yeah. They get exposed to uh, what is really cool and hip and on the forefront of movie making in Eastern Europe. So we, uh, you know, it, again, we, it's a labor of love. Uh, the festival will take place in May, from May uh, 2nd through the 6th, um, and uh, your audience can watch us at? on uh, at the well at the Goethe Institute, the German Cultural Center, which is our home and a wonderful supporter. Uh, UCLA uh, Center for European Eurasian Studies is uh, also a great supporter. At the West Hollywood Library, with uh, the city of West Hollywood, you know, came on board with their mm -hmm. support this year. We're probably looking at uh, a couple of other venues to show the films, uh, um, probably West Los Angeles as well, uh, and one other in Hollywood. And then um, starting in the fall, we will be uh, showing films, I hope, you know, in other places mm -hmm. and would love to, you know, work with colleagues elsewhere. Um, and we have a screening coming up uh, next week in Berkeley, the Pacific Film Archive at the University of California at, at Berkeley. Uh, we are working on a major retrospective. That's another part of what we do. We show films by either a, um, a filmmaker who really left his mark on filmmaking um, worldwide, or um, in one case we did a, a retrospective of cinema of Slovenia, a small country that few people know. Yeah. Uh, so we do that in collaboration with uh, other nonprofit organizations like the UCLA Film and Television Archive, Austin Film Society in Austin, Texas, and this, you know, Los Angeles Film Forum, Berkeley, Harvard Film Archive. So, but it's so amazing actually to uh, be present for anybody, for anybody who has not seen Eastern European films. You got to come and see them. Mm -hmm. I, I watch like two movies a night. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I said in the beginning. I'm super addictive to them. But uh, last year I got to see Mother of Asphalt from yes, Croatia. Yes. I don't remember the movies I see, but I remember this movie and I think of it because when you see that movie, you just think like, where am I living? You know, is there another, uh, you know, Mars is not that far. It's right <laughs> on the other side of uh, the, the ocean. But it's a totally different culture and movies really get to represent, present those psychological, philosophical, mm -hmm. and all other social issues mm -hmm. that we don't face, and the only way we can see them is that way. Well, I think that it, it, movies need to, I mean, you need as an audience, uh, and we are audience, although mm -hmm. we, we, we run film festivals, I think we need to connect emotionally with movies. Uh, th th we may hate the, the main character, or we may sympathize with him or her, so, but without the emotional connection and strong characters, there is no movie. Yeah. Uh, with all, again, CGI is fantastic. I love technology, it's great. Um, but I 
think I would prefer to see real actors. I love Absolutely actors. I respect yeah. actors. We have phenomenal actors. I mean, so m there have never been so many wonderful actors everywhere. So you want to see somebody, you know, bring that character to life. To it. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience unlike any other. So why would you not do that? It's okay to have uh, stunts and, uh, and, you know, some uh, special visual effects. Fine. But not 80% of that. I mean, so what, what are we doing? Like you said, you know, you cannot, you know, so we're all going to be glued to our screens uh, or the mobile, uh, or watching a movie on my mobile phone. I don't want to yeah. watch a movie on my, on my phone. The uh, stories, the stories are, and you know, get, getting with the stories, I've watched about like 60 movies last year on your festival. I have saw all kinds of things and I saw really good movies that I'm right. really sad, pissed that I can't get on DVD because they're not, Authorized to release them yet? Well, we're we're working on that. We're working on a distribution arm. We just started the film market with Action on Film last year, and we had Multivision Air, uh, Digi Distribution, uh, Cavalry and Associates, Fairway Film Alliance, Showcase Entertainment. We're adding Guerrilla Pictures this year and a few others, and we sold around 35 films last year. But I think the difference between the, the European sensibility and the American sensibility is this: European filmmakers make films about social issues and, per and personal plights. American filmmakers, it's like going to an American restaurant, like a claim jumpers. You're going to get a giant portion. <laughs> you know you're going to get this giant portion of food that you're not going to finish. That's a good comparison. And <laughs> the people who make film, a lot of people make film in America, they make films to excess, meaning that they've got these big stories and all these guns and all this, the, the, the fast cars and, and, and the naked women and all this stuff. And I'm not judging that. I'm just saying that there's a different sensibility. Uh, our Russian filmmakers, such as Slava Ross, made a film called uh, Siberia Minamor last year and uh, Fat Stupid Rabbit. Two of the most beautiful films you're ever going to see. Our Australian filmmaker, one of which was Dan Harrington, made Lost Angels this year and Small Days last year. Two quiet character studies, beautiful films. Our Japanese filmmakers, uh, such as Akiko Itsuzumi, made a film uh, about the um, prostitution of... Uh, uh, Korean women by Japanese soldiers. And so if you look at these groups of people, European filmmakers, in my experience, tend to make films that are greater social issues because they face greater social issues. Yeah. In America, you know, I just recently made a film. It's called Sonny and Ray Ray. It's about two people who can't love each other. But I just I, saw the poster. So. But listen, thank you I've for got, giving me that much. I've got the car chase. <laughs> I've got the guns. I've got I've got all that stuff, because that's what's interesting to me, and it's what I have to compete with, to stand out. Unfortunately, now, I've made the quiet film, and it was so quiet that there was no one in the audience. There was, <laughs> I think there was one cricket, and the projectionist, and so, it's a very very um, uh, tightrope, tight tightrope that we're walking, and so. The festivals have a challenge to support both endeavors, but the filmmakers, the festival, and then the supporters have the challenge of getting the audiences to the theaters to see these things. Because again, you're competing with your mobile device, HBO Go, your yeah. phone, yeah. Your, pad, your iPad, your playbook. Yeah. That's, not not the way it, that's yeah. not the way films, in my opinion, were meant to be seen, but it's the younger kids don't know the theaters as much yeah. as we do. And so it's a natural thing for them to say, oh, I'll watch it on my iPad or I'll watch it on my computer. They're missing out. Convenience. Uh, let's get back uh, just to complete the topic of the festival. So tell me, uh, tell us about AOF. Action the, on film, uh, it's in its ninth dates, year. times, what, you know. We're in our ninth year. We'll be at the Kokorian Theaters in Monrovia from uh, August 16th to the 24th. We have um, roughly 15 parties and award shows throughout the week. We do seminars. Again, we've added a sales market. Roughly 65 to 70 percent of our audience come from within the United States. 30 to 35 percent comes from outside the states, meaning Germany, France, uh, England, Australia, Japan, China. Uh, okay. A big audience from uh, Australia, and I still can't figure out why. We're very big in Australia. I don't know why that is. Um, we do show action films, but our, 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 our push is for comedy, drama, documentary, experimental, and music video. As you said, you saw about 60 films last year. We show in between the four and 500 range, depending on what our, our programming allows. And one of the biggest things about action on film is that we have what's called the Guaranteed Filmmaker Program. We're the only festival in the world that does this. 
And what that means is once your work has been accepted with us, no matter what it takes, we will show your future work as well. So that means that our festival has to grow every single year in either th theater size, length of the, of the days we screen, because we began as a three-day festival, and now we're an eight-day festival. Yeah. And our projections are in the next five years will be a three-week festival. So that is because of this guaranteed filmmaker program where a filmmaker who's been with us since 2007, their work will be shown for the rest of their life. And the reason we do that is we want to walk with them on their journey and their path, their filmmaking history. And we've never seen filmmakers make worse efforts. They've only made better efforts. And they know that by coming back with us, we've helped fund films, we help produce films, we've helped with Kickstarter and Indiegogo programs, we've made outright donations to film. Uh, uh, Eric Klein at DCP, for instance, this year, there's a filmmaker named Giovanni Zelko. He said, I'm making a movie and I can't afford the, um, the ADR. And so I called uh, Eric Klein and said, hey, this guy needs 25,000 in, 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 um, in um, um, ADR. I'll be willing to trade 25,000 in advertising with the festival if you will give him that. He says, absolutely. So we make those deals on a daily basis. Uh, Hollywood Rentals came in for my film and said, we'll give you all the equipment, but promote Hollywood Rentals. Hollywood Rentals. <laughs> so we're making Ching. deals now for filmmakers <laughs> where we can get them access to the equipment they need, to the locations they need. Larry Parker at Mo Richardson has become a great supporter and sponsor of the AOF Festival and of our filmmakers. And that's some, one thing that we're doing now is distribution, sales, and also creation of projects. And we're trying to help filmmakers have a voice and have a stronger voice than they would have a, alone. And that's one of our biggest things. How about now touching on the uh, community or the local impact that the festivals have mm -hmm. on uh, on the areas that they're showing? Mm -hmm. um, impact on people coming to you, uh, economic impact on the local restaurants and stuff like that. Do you um, have you analyzed that? Do you get any feedback? I know you have. We analyze it in depth, and I'll tell you, Monrovia is a great city. I love the city. We spent three years trying to get into this city. Are we going to do great business for every business? No, absolutely not. A lot of services that are provided by the city, people don't want. Now, restaurants, bars, nightclubs, hotels, rental cars, um, theaters, popcorn, Coca-Cola, we're going to sell that stuff. Um, our black tie event at, at Sandy Racetrack is a, sold, is a sold out event before we even started it. We will do well for those businesses. We will impact the city in that way. Are we going to impact Mary's Dress Shop? No. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. Are we going to impact Yogurt Land? 100%. You know, businesses that recognize our traffic flow and recognize what we do, they are going to benefit by changing their hours of operation and what they're offering to our audiences. It's just a fact. You know, people who watch movies tend to like to eat. People who like movies tend to like to have a drink once in a while. So those places are going to benefit. People who travel need a hotel and a rental car, and they need those things. We know what our impact is there. People who are, are, are offering services that our people do not want, I can't help them. But see, it's interesting that um, I, I'm standing from, uh, looking from the uh, point of view of being involved with the Sarajevo Film Festival in Bosnia and where, where the impact of the festival is creating this eight-day thing mm -hmm. where the shops are open 24-7. Absolutely. Uh, the bars are open 24-7. You know, you kind of go f rolling for two days and then you're knocked out for a day and because you can't get enough sleep because it's happening all the time. So when hopefully, you know, this show helps create some kind of a, what you called it, a event thing. So well, when you, can the event event you have to eventize what you're doing. As yeah. I'll tell you, there's a place here in Mon Monrovia called Friends Cafe, and the owner's name is Joey, and Joey did not sponsor us this year. He brought some free coupons over to, or discount coupons. His, pl his place was packed for a week because he offered what our people needed, free Wi-Fi service, coffee and lots of it, Danish, and a place to talk. That's all it required. Yep. And I was there every single day, and the place was packed every single day. There's a reason for that. And... We had a couple other places that just could not supply um, the help that people needed or what they wanted, and people walked away. So, I mean, it's incumbent upon the community as well to say, we want to welcome you here. We want to make money with you because you can make money. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If there's a, a, if the audience raises, uh, how many people did you have this year? We uh, had last year. We had twenty thousand seats filled, and that represents about sixteen thousand right. people who, because you had double seats, sometimes sold and so on and so, so forth. So if you get from the whole valley sixty thousand during that. You, you you have the, the, the little dress shop affected as well. Well, you could, but here's could, the thing. Right. You know, we had realtors <laughs> advertise with us last year. We had accountants advertise with us last year. And they made a smart move because they began investing early on. We had Velo Bikes. And now no one was going to go from our festival to, over to Velo Bikes and buy a $20,000 bicycle. But Velo Bikes was represented, and so their name recognition was brought way up to the fore. And I think that's very important. So people who would be considering buying a bike in that year remembered Velo and went over to see Haraj, uh, who was our sponsor. Smart move on his part. Yeah, so uh, moving the festival on, we get to the end of every day, and then you got the after parties. After parties. Well, Ruby, let's yeah. skip to Vera first, and then I'll get back Absolutely. to you on the after parties because I enjoyed every one of them. But you guys... <laughs> <laughs> um, to an extent, right? <laughs> right. Well, we, um, we have, uh, well, we just had a great party on Sunday for the Oscars. Where there was mm -hmm. a fundraiser. Uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, smaller, um, you know, uh, parties that are privately hosted by our, either our board members or supporters or sponsors. Um, we work very closely with uh, um, our, you know, funders like the, um, the Goethe Institute and the UCLA. Uh, so we try to create the events together with them. Uh, and our focus is, uh, and with sponsors, it's really not the working in the same way. It's, it's a different uh, approach. Uh, it is the name recognition, absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, because they like um, those. For example, we just had a, 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 a wine company, a Tisa Wine Company, from uh, representing Hungarian wines. So people are interested in catering to an audience that we have that appreciates wine, that is an audience that, of uh, moviegoers, uh, concert goers, mm -hmm. people who are like to entertain mm -hmm. and who like uh, um, you know, to have really top of the line wines, which we actually got from Tisa Wine Company, oh, yeah. so a little plug in. Um, I missed that and one. Yeah, so it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was a really, you know, we, we try to, uh, that's what we can deliver. We deliver our supporters um, our, and an audience uh, that uh, is the kind of overlapping audience with the American Cinematheque, uh, with the Disney Hall, um, uh, people who go to lectures, who go see foreign films, uh, who go to uh, Lemley theaters, landmark theaters to see foreign, foreign language films. Um, so that is the, uh, what is interests our sponsors. Uh, we do have opening and closing night galas. And we've, uh, um, and, well, our best part is up for volunteers, and I'm sure you have the same thing. Yes, you know, we love our volunteers. Uh, so we go to some funky places around. It's a Miracle Mile uh, yes. area in um, uh, Los Angeles between Fairfax and La Brea uh, that is very close to LACMA, which people know more than they know the, the Goethe Institute. But the Goethe Institute is located in um, a fabulous uh, um, business complex that also houses e-entertainment uh, mm -hmm. television. And next door is uh, Sundance Institute and then Variety and so on. So it's, it's a really good, nice yep. hub. And then LACMA is across the street. Um, Screen Actors Guild uh, is across the street. Marie Callender's is across the street. <laughs> so what do we do? Yeah, we go and we have dinner before or after. Mm -hmm. And there's, a, you know, the pizzeria. Is a, the Starbucks is doing business How with us. How open is it for uh, the, the audience or uh, anybody? Uh, those parties, are they cl close character or? Yes, so okay. all our parties, yes, they, they are. And uh, we had, the, for instance, a, a VIP party a week before the festival last year at the Louis Stern uh, Gallery, Fine Art Gallery in uh, West Hollywood on Melrose. It works for us because that's we know our audience and yes. that works for them. They loved it because it's a, a diplomats from local consulates. Uh, very few of them are actually from our region. Most of the countries don't have a consulate. It's too expensive. Uh, but we have the great support from uh, the Swiss consulate, from Austrian consulate, from, you know, so other European countries, Germany, of course. So um, we work well with them. So that type of audience really responds well to uh, an event in a gallery where they get to, you know, mm -hmm. socialize and yeah. talk and so on. So that's Feel the like type of thing Feel like a million bucks for a little while. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's, uh, you know, the, we, our sponsors, uh, um, obviously like it as well. It's a... Uh, um, in, in terms of food, we have different restaurants who, who would, you know, donate the food for. The, they understand the nature of a non, of a nonprofit uh, organization, so they really do support us. Um, but for the businesses, I would say probably the 
uh, Miracle Mile area, and then for our volunteer meetings, we just keep going around town. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it, there is a residual effect also Absolutely. of the film festival. It's not just on that particular day. Because somebody will walk by and say, oh, this is a really cool restaurant. I didn't know it was here. So maybe three weeks later, this Absolutely. person, you can't track it and say, hey, we, we actually brought this person to see your uh, restaurant. But that's what happens. It's a community event. It creates the sense of community. I like create some co check cards so that you can get a, a residual from uh, it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny also yeah. is that the well, audience is for... so cool. Let me kind of yeah. give you a million bucks each. Okay. So, uh, this oh, is wow. Like, yeah, uh, so far, you know, you were real good. Okay. So a million bucks. <laughs> so here we are. There you go. We'll, we'll Thank I'll you. tell you later Thank what that's okay. for. Okay. You know, I'm going to make a point is, is that also <laughs> yeah. the, the, Sorry, the, the audiences <laughs> for film festivals, they tend to be uh, higher income earners. And they're a very uh, desirable demographic for a lot mm -hmm. of sponsors because they buy high end electronics, they buy nicer cars, mm -hmm. they are able to travel, so they use airlines. And um, we know what they make per year. And they're not making 20000 a year, or they wouldn't be with us. The other thing is that on the other side, in Monrovia, there were places like Rudy's, um, Bar O, Cafe Opera, um, uh, Mediterranean Grill. They embraced us so quickly that going in and spending money with them was a pleasure for us. And when we were in Pasadena, there was, there was Ruth's Chris and Japone Bistro. And those places didn't fail to uh, pack up with our audiences and with the people buying their services and products. And it's a very important thing for the community to understand. A film festival is a communal event. And everything that people do during a communal event, they do during a festival. Yeah. They have to eat, they have to meet, they have to talk, mm -hmm. they have to drink, they have to have entertainment. All those things occur in a community. And I think when the community supports what that festival is doing, they're supporting themselves. Yeah, absolutely. You're bringing yeah. all these new people and all these advertising opportunities to what you're doing. But again, you have to be open to that. And it's residual, it stays. It's very like much for example, I have never, uh, before last year on a workshop, I have mm -hmm. not been to Peach Cafe. Right. You did a couple of then and I what a great went sponsor. over there. Oh my like, God! Huh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I pass by it every day. You know, but out of all the th places in the city, I we had just few, never stopped by. We had know? a few seminars there. Great food, great staff, great owner. I mean, you would never know that if you had never been there. Mm -hmm. But we were able to bring people there, and she was one of the most wonderful and outgoing people who again embraced what we were attempting yeah. to do and she saw the opportunity. So that existed. all stays later on after the festival Absolutely. is gone. And uh, one of the things that is important for both of you in the organization of such things is not just that support of the local community, but financial support. So let's kind of touch a little bit on the type of financial support that you live off there. Uh, we uh, have grants. Uh, uh, some of the organizations that I've named, and uh, uh, last year we were very proud to be um, the only European festival to actually receive a grant from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. They do have a festival grant. You have to be a nonprofit to qualify, and you have to be in business more than five years. So the sixth year is the first time that you can actually apply for that grant, which we did, and we, we got that, and that was really tremendous. Um, we've also won grants, um, uh, well, the, the grant that we got from the California Arts Council also comes from the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, we've also gotten grants from the Trust for Mutual Understanding in New York. Um, but these are all, you know, it's the, the, the usual suspects apply right. for these grants and it's all How do you grow that base? Uh, the base for grants? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, th there's got to be a lot of networking. Uh, we, well, I go and I support my colleagues and other organizations that are, uh, so I know a lot of people who apply for grants and we sometimes cry on each other's shoulder. <laughs> um, the, um, I have to say though that uh, it's a great support because um, nonprofit arts organizations could not exist without grants. I, I don't think it would be very, very hard. But by the same token, the, um, the amount of paperwork is so crushing on um, a basically people, you know, yeah, organizations that have no staff, it's like a feasibility study. Right. You know, I think I could, you know, 
you know, get a job and uh, write a feasibility study for a $200 million project because it's exactly the same, almost exactly the same. It doesn't matter whether you're applying for $5,000 or it's, it's an, an enormous process to do. And um, I think that, you know, the, the desire for accountability has gotten a little out of hand. And uh, uh, it's like with testing in schools. You know, the, so now everybody knows it really wasn't such a terrific, the best idea ever. But first you have to, you know, put a lot of poor kids through, you know, uh, misery in order to realize that. So it's hard, yeah. but grants are one of the sources, um, difficult as they are, I, I, I've done a lot of them. Um, individual donors, you cultivate your friends, and we are very proud to have very loyal uh, supporters year after year. Even if they don't come or they're traveling or something, they will support us and send their donation. Um, corporate support has not been really that strong for us because people, and I understand that people don't see that immediate uh, benefit yeah. from being as associated because they want to have, you know, the big numbers, the big demographics and so on. And if it's a mixed demographics and we have a huge online audience the and actually the, you know, the, uh, the for, let's say viewer sponsor you would like to advertise. Um, it's a combination of the physical audience and the physical event, but then of these other events throughout the year. And then it's the online audience, and then a big chunk that nobody really sees that's, that's beneath the, the tip of the iceberg is the partnership with uh, the organizations that we work with. So whatever information we have is trickling through the channels of these huge entities because they advertise us, every, all our funders, and these are big organizations. They have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people on their mailing lists. So that's really who okay. our constituency okay. is. It's the arts communities uh, you know, nationwide. So that's, that's how that functions for the nonprofits. Um, we, uh, so I would say that you know, for us, the biggest challenge would be to grow the corporate sponsorships um, and to uh, build capacity. Uh, which is hard because you don't want to spend your money. I mean, it's, it's going to be hard to spend the money on staff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how, you, you know how it is for you, because volunteers are great, we love them, but you have to have some professionals. Absolutely. And, you know, and, you can, and, and then you know, everybody's looking at your uh, bottom line because then it becomes your overhead. And in our case, we, almost, we have a basically negligible overhead because everything goes to programming. Everything else is subsidized. I mean, it's, you know, we cover it, the, the board yeah. and the, the pro bono work and so on. So the moment you have that, it's going to completely you know, change the shift, the paradigm shift, where you know, all of a sudden, boom, you have the, the overhead that shoots through the roof, and you don't want to do that. So how yeah, do you balance doesn't. that? And we are um, a for-profit organization. We take no grants, we take no donations, we take no help from anyone. In fact, we've been in three cities in a decade. We've never asked one city for anything. Uh, we don't ask for street closures. We don't ask for police assistance. We don't ask for anything. We reach into our pockets every year, and we pay for the event. And we've been very, very um, lucky that we've been successful because it's meant uh, very high submission fees, meaning that lots of submissions come in, even though our fees are very, very reasonable. Uh, we have we sell lots of tickets, yeah, and we do great with our advertising base for our programs and our um, specialty parties and events, and our sponsors are uh, have been met with a, a, a great success as partners such as, you know, Ink Tip, uh, Wright Brothers, Altidus USA. They've all been there. Izzy Drinks. Um, they've all been very generous. Soy Joy, and. What that means is we trade them out advertising for either a dollars product or sponsors and gifts and prizes. Sony has been with us for five years. And what happens is they get something back for their dollar or for their product, but we don't raise grants. We don't um, um, uh, take anything from any government uh, so what's, entity. So what's your biggest challenge that you could actually better? Um, our biggest challenge like is, to. I think our biggest challenge would be um, community support. Um, we would like to reach out to every business, every local vendor, every home, uh, every student filmmaker, every mom, every dad, and say, listen, this event is coming to your city. We'd love you to, to take part in it. We'd love you to come to the parties. We'd love you to meet the filmmakers. We'd love for, to hear your voice. And that's one thing we're working on. Uh, uh, 
to create and to build. We're also working on distribution of films for filmmakers so that they can monetize their efforts. Very difficult to put your life savings into a project and then go put it in the closet because no one's ever going to see it past a festival. So we'd like to help them monetize. And uh, lastly, I think just doing things like this and meeting people like you who really care because it's very difficult uh, for someone. Well, <laughs> I care. You, know, yeah. you do care. And I've seen it in meetings we've had yeah. with uh, city officials and, and that we've had with people who are involved. You care and you, and you get it. You understand. Some people just don't. There's not enough time in their day to care about what we're doing. Right. So we have to care a little bit more. And I think you're one of the people who do that. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, I'm sure by reading what you guys do and uh, talking with you before, I know that you are very much uh, embedded currently mm -hmm. in the L.A. community or the movie scene there. Mm -hmm. You are working at least, you know, you're mm -hmm. on the right location. So right. yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, the same thing for you, it, it, it's uh, it, in order to get to that level where I can call it, where I could call it an event, where I know that a lot of people are coming from El Monte and South Pasadena and down Covina because they know it's happening year after year after year. Right. I've thought of um, uh, the LA partnership that you might be from not be familiar with. Absolutely, uh, I know nothing. San Gabriel nothing Valley about it. Economic Partnership is okay. the name. They have a tourism map they just put out for the San Gabriel Valley. Mm -hmm. And this morning I just accidentally shared that. So if the event becomes a part of the attraction and the calendar. Wonderful. We'd love to help. Voila. Let us know so, how we can help. But that is excellent. So before we wrap it up, you got a million bucks each as a thank you for yes. for for that's being a great pay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Well, see, that, that's how, how we do it here. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm yeah, going yes. right to Damon's yeah, for a drink with this million dollars. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the question here is, if you won that money on a lottery, which a lot of people do, without the skill of doing something with it, they say 95% of them wasted in, in the first year. Mm -hmm. So the question here is, if you had that million dollars to spend on something, how would you double it? Vera, would you, want, would you like to try or you want to have Del go first? Um, you know, I've actually, I have to say that the uh, small budget that we have, uh, we've always been in the, in the uh, black. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not like what they say for nonprofits. We really, you know, we really watch our bottom line. Uh, and um, I think that I believe in theaters. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, starting a, um, a theater and the traveling festival, um, I, I love outdoor, the concept of outdoor uh, um, screenings. Um, the drive, uh, uh, drive-in theaters. I think I would love to do that. I believe that there is an audience out there. Um, I would love to go out of the big cities because theaters are closed in in most cities around the U.S. And I think that there is money to be made and a wonderful experience for the audience that we can provide. And I'm I'm absolutely sure that I would double the money and do really well. I have to agree with you because I know a person that you probably also know from uh, from West, uh, Hollywood mm -hmm. that did that and it's very successful. So I uh, agree with you on that. Okay, but I only I mention him because I it's need a to secret. talk. I know, okay, so we need <laughs> to talk to that person, right? Double the money. Okay. <laughs> I would take it to my partner Doug Fowell. He was a great supporter of the AOF Channel and the AOF Festival, and he's a money market uh, manager and a, uh, an incredible investor, and he is one of the guys who believed in what we were doing, wrote a check, uh, a very sizable check, and said, put it to work, and he believed in us. So I think what I would do with this million dollars is take it to people who believe in what I'm doing and show them that I believe in what they're doing and give them a shot to double it. That's what All I would right. do. All right. Well, thank you what very much. What would you do, Nick? Yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> exactly. Wait, yeah. Nick, what would yeah. you do? Let's turn I would this just, table see, a little bit. I do yeah. this so that I can yeah. follow your money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put it there and I'm happy. Okay. No, 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 we still have a couple of minutes to go, so do tell us, you know, like what, what would you do? No, we, we, it's interesting, you know, this portion of the show is people like to see how people would invest because there's that saying, uh, uh, it takes money to make money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's just a saying, and a lot of people don't know that it takes actually knowledge to make money. It's not that just the money. So we kind of put this in the show so that uh, the audience can actually hear all kinds of things. You know, we had people investing in uh, education. We have people investing in uh, oil or any mm -hmm. kind of stuff. It, it, it was a whole thing. Um, there was somebody investing in in uh, in uh, 
the Silicon Valley and new projects and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's an interesting part out there. It, uh, medical, medical is great right now. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of uh, projects right here in the valley that are pr uh, projected to go up. Mm -hmm. So um, you're f unique in your own, and I hope that that brings the value right there. So money into film festivals, yes, <laughs> into <laughs> people who believe, yes. in, believe you. Yes. in you. Okay, absolutely, yeah. exactly. Thank you very much for being here. I hope everybody learned about um, the educational points of film festivals and what they can do for the communities as well for a personal growth of a person that comes and dedicates some time to uh, move their eyes from the little smartphone screen to the big screen off the, the cellular screen. And, and don't yeah. forget, Action on Film does waive the fees of Monrovia filmmakers and writers. They pay no fees to uh, submit their work to us. Great. So if you're a filmmaker in Monrovia, check, look up Dell. Del Weston. A-O-F-F-E-S-T. A-O-F-F-E-S-T dot com. Yeah, we, we don't charge any entry fees at all. Um, so everybody can submit their film. And um, But, you know, we if you're a filmmaker, we want to hear from you. It's, and I look uh, forward to seeing know. the films. Yes. Yes. But thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Yes, what a pleasure. Great. What a yeah. great pleasure. Until next great. time, come down and watch us at The Paradigm Shift. I'm Nick Zigich. See you later. Mm -hmm.